What's up guys, Spin Firearms here, and today we're going to be talking about firearms, aftermarket parts, reliability, what you can trust, what you shouldn't trust, and so on. And I've basically come up with all these conclusions simply from doing this stuff. I'm not one of those people that just sits around and talks about it if I haven't done it or I'm not currently doing it. So this is something that I actually do often. If you know me, I have a lot of Glocks, a lot of Glock builds, I have uh, Springfield Armory builds, shield builds, I have all sorts of stuff. And so basically what that means is putting aftermarket parts on a stock firearm. A firearm that usually, in most situations, will run flawlessly right out of the box. But before we get started, hit the like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe. Now this firearm is safety checked and unloaded. And it is just a Glock 27, but as you can see, not your average Glock 27. We're going to talk about it. So what I've come up with in life is, for a firearm, the number one most important thing, OEM mags. If you have a good handgun that's been reliable and everything, never run aftermarket mags. I don't care if they've ran flawlessly for a couple hundred rounds, do not run them. Run OEM mags. And what I mean by that is, yes, this is a 9 round mag for this 40. But I can also run the larger mags. Those are OEM mags. Those are mags designed by this company to run in this handgun plus the larger versions of it. That allows for a ton of magazine compatibility. So that is the number one thing in my opinion. Number two, everything is about what you choose and select and what brands and what companies and stuff like that. Then number three, everything is about your testing. You need to make sure that you go to the range for instance, I put all this stuff on my handgun, right? We got a guide rod, some pins, takedown lever, extended slide stop, back plate, base plate, barrel, grip, stuff like that, right? You need to take this handgun as is with all your aftermarket parts added to it and run a couple hundred rounds through it. Then you also need to run some self-defense ammo through it. Now, people always say you should never change out your triggers for everyday carry, and I can sort of agree with that. And we're going to get into that. Other people also say is you should never customize them. You should never upgrade them. You should never put a back plate on them. Never put a base plate. Stuff like that. And we're going to talk about that as well. Let's start with what brands to use, if any. The brands you want to use are the ones that are quality. You know their machining is on point. Stuff is up to spec and so on. And companies like that are KKM Precision. I really like Hooper Gunworks. Uh, Lift Free Armory does a pretty good job. Lone Wolf is a little bit sketchy in my opinion, but there's NDZ Performance. I mean, there's SLR Rifle Works makes great base plates. I mean, there's Ghost, Grey Ghost, Precision, stuff like that. Companies like that really make good quality stuff. Soares International, I mean, there's so many good ones. The ones to look out for are the off brands. The ones to look out for are the no names, technically, the more cheaper stuff. For instance, people, when they see a firearm like this, they don't realize all the internals are OEM, right? They're the parts that came with the handgun design for it. All these other companies make parts kits for Glocks, but that is not the OEM parts. That is an aftermarket brand. I never change out the internals. The only part inside the handgun that I change out is the connector on some of them. I can change it out to a 3.5 pound connector, which brings the trigger weight down to about four and a half, five pounds and crisp it up a little bit. And I only use Ghost and Apex trigger connectors. As far as everyday carry triggers, the only triggers that I will carry are the OEM um, Glock Performance triggers. Those are only for the Gen 5s. Other than that, Apex triggers and the CNC triggers. CNC um, or Tyrant CNC makes great triggers. They make great aftermarket parts, and I trust theirs because I've ran them through many, many different firearms. Um, the Glock store, I've had some you know, malfunctions with some parts from there, and then some that have ran really well. So it's all about testing your firearms, like I said. But as far as trigger, Apex, um, the OEM performance trigger for Glocks, or um, what did I say, the Tyrant CNC trigger shoe. Other than that, I'm not a big fan of a whole lot of other triggers. Um, oh yeah, the Wheaton Arms trigger for Glocks is also great as well. Next up, backplates. They really don't affect much. As long as they're cut to spec and cut to the right size, they're good. So if you use a company like Millspin, which is what I use, uh, Millspin has the best machining. Everything is on point. That's also where this base plate's from. And the reason why I use the same company for multiple parts is because you're going to get the exact pattern. If you go with Tyrant CNC, you're going to get the same color and the same pattern. If you go with Millspin, you're going to be able to match your back plate to your base plate. Next up, let's talk about base plates. 
those are something you really really need to um test right for instance this right here is a nine round mag it's a glock oem mag with a mag spring but this base plate right here is aftermarket this i wouldn't be too worried about it's more about the plus base plates right stuff that adds capacity a lot of times they just simply tell you use the oem mag the only base plate i've had a serious issue with when it comes to any handgun is my um hive base plate my hive plus two for a glock 26 that is the only base plate i've had an issue with other than that mill spin slr rifle rifle works strike industries mag guts henning group um barracuda tactical i mean i could go on all the other base plates i've had good luck with but i've also heard of other people having some issues but for me they've all ran great and the only one i don't run is that hive plus two because it gave me issues not on one occasion not on two occasions but actually three occasions where that spring would get stuck and it wouldn't go any further so not 100 percent sure what that was about um if anything but next up mag releases mag releases are a big deal if you're running a polymer mag like on the glock 43x if you're using the oem mag you need to run polymer if you're running metal mags you want to run a metal mag catch or mag release that's simply because metal on plastic is going to wear down over time and it's either going to mess up your mag catch or your magazines so that is that guide rods there's only one guide rod i will run on glocks i actually just ordered a dpm kit for glocks i've heard they're top-notch quality they're great and they really reduce recoil so that video is going to be coming soon but that right there is an avalanche arms that is the only one that i have found that has been reliable i bought a tungsten one from the glock store i bought some um a stainless steel one from the glock store every other kind lone wolf literally has caused malfunctions has caused issues this is the only one that I trust, and I have it in my other Glock 27, I have it in a couple Glock 26s, I have it in my 26L, and it just runs flawlessly. That right there is a ghost precision slide stop and um, you know slide release for a lot of people who use it like that. But I don't I've never had any issues with different slide stops, but I have heard of people having slide stops that either don't work for them or they end up locking the slide back while shooting simply because of their grip. So you can get different styles to adjust that. It's rare that that will cause any malfunctions. Pins kits, most of them are to spec, both, most of them stay in place. Take down levers, I mean you're not going to have any issues with that. Just buy good quality parts. Grips don't affect anything other than helping your grip on the actual handgun itself. And barrels. I like KKM Precision for 40 Smith & Wesson Glocks because they, they don't have fully supported chambers. 9mm does, 10mm does, 45 ACP, 45 GAP, 357 SIG, 380, and so on. They all have fully supported chambers from Glock. But this right here does not. So I put KKM Precision barrels in there just to lessen the chance of something actually going wrong. As far as barrels, that is a pretty important part in the handgun. So do not buy off-brand. Go with Hooper Gunworks. Go with KKM Precision. Go with Barstow. Um, go with Storm Lake. I mean, there's a bunch of good high-end. Grey Ghost Precision. True Precision. Spend 100 or more for your barrel, and you'll tend to be pretty on point. Wilson Combat. I mean, there's all sorts of barrel options out there if you are going to swap. The only reason I put it in these is simply because of that fully supported chamber. Otherwise, on my regular Glock, Glocks, I don't change out barrels unless I get to a certain round count. And then last but not least, your sights don't typically cause malfunctions or issues, um, but sometimes messing with your um, messing with optics can. I've seen many times malfunctions optics caused, right? For instance, if it weighs too much, it slows the slide down, it just doesn't sit right on your handgun, it causes malfunctions. It's pretty rare, but I've actually seen a lot of videos of it recently. No optic on here, so I don't have to worry about it. And most sights that you put on, as long as you make sure that they are, you know, loctited down, um, you won't have any issues with, you know, sights malfunctioning or falling off or anything like that. Just take care of them, put thread protector, whatever the case may be on them, and you are good to go. Other than that, when it comes to self-defense, here's how it is. I've studied up on it a lot, and I have seen cases where they actually point out, hey, your handgun is all these aftermarket parts. Your handgun has a lighter trigger on it. Your handgun has a backplate that has a guy, looks like he's, he's peeing, but in reality what it means is F it, right? And so stuff like that does come up in court cases. But what really it all comes down to is what actually happened 
when you go there it's jurors just like you and i if we ever got called to do it they have to be reasonable they can't be biased anything for instance if someone runs up on me with a handgun points it at me and i have a fully custom gun light trigger back plate base plate all this awesome stuff and i defend myself legally that's the case and that's generally how it is i've never seen anyone get charged um simply for defending themselves legally based off a part on their handgun that they swapped out has it been brought up in court yes have they tried to make a big deal out of it in certain states yes they have but those cases even though it was brought up in transcripts and stuff like that the person was not found guilty um for any reason having to do with um triggers or anything like that it does make it harder but what it really comes down to it you're not fighting for if your handgun was customized to make you a better shot or a faster shot or whatever what it comes down to is are your actions justified did you meet the threat with an equal threat and so on so hope you guys enjoyed the video those are just my thoughts everyone's entitled to their own opinion thanks for watching